two days, 12 thrift stores, one enormous thrift haul. Welcome to day one of Thriftmas! Happy December 1st everyone! I am beyond excited about what I have in store for you guys this month. I decided to take a pause from my regular content this month and dedicate the entire month of December to thrift shopping. A lot of creators post Vlogmas vlogs every day in the lead up to Christmas and I've checked out a couple of these sort of Vlogmas things in the past and you know, it's, it's very consumerism based. There's a lot of going out and buying expensive gifts and, you know, splurging on expensive things around Christmas time. But this is 2020 and it's been a rough year for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that have lost their jobs, they're experiencing financial hardship. Obviously people still want to give gifts around Christmas time, but maybe they're a little bit tight for cash. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to dedicate the month to shopping around, thrift shopping, flipping thrifted items, gifting thrifted items, decorating my house with thrifted Christmas decorations, everything that I could think of thrift related, I'm going to be posting every day this month. So with that, I'm starting off Thriftmas with a bang. As I said, I went to 12 thrift stores over the course of two days and behind me, is everything that I bought. I'm so excited to show you guys these things. There's some absolutely incredible finds here. But before I get into showing you the items, how about I'll take you on the shopping trip with me. I'll show you which stores that I visited. I'll show you the items that I didn't buy. I have to apologize in advance though, because the footage, it's all shot vertically because I was originally not shooting it for YouTube. I was just shooting it to put on TikTok. But I asked you guys on Instagram if you wanted me to make a thrifting series for December and hundreds and hundreds of people told me that they did want to see that sort of content. So I've just stolen my TikTok videos and I'm going to be showing you those. So they are vertical, but don't worry, the rest of the month I'll have some nice, good quality footage for you. But with that, let's head out shopping. Okay, so I started off my day at Vinnie's at Rouse Hill. Now this place, it didn't really have a particularly large selection of homewares. I was a little bit disappointed. So I said to the guy at the counter, which Vinnie's should I go to next for homewares? And he said to me, you have to go to the Vinnie's at Windsor. So I headed straight there from Rouse Hill and boy, I was so happy. The first thing I found was this when I walked in the door. They had a lot of homewares here. So the funny thing is this store is kind of divided in half. It's got like a front store and then you walk out the back and it opens up into this absolutely massive homeware decor section. There was so much stuff here. I think I spent over an hour just picking things up, looking at them, looking at the price, putting them in my cart, out of my cart, you know, trying to decide if I actually needed it. Like this. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes, it's cute, right? So anyway, I was looking for, you know, glassware, things that I could put my plants in, things that I could decorate my house with, put on bookshelves, all that sort of stuff. Don't forget to always look underneath things. Thrift stores are notorious for sort of stashing things away and hiding them thing underneath thing. So uh, anyway, I finished up there and then down the road is the Salvation Army. This is also in Windsor. This place is only open from Monday through to Wednesday and I think they shut at like 2.30 or something. They shut very, very early. So I uh, was lucky that I visited on a Monday, but don't go driving all the way to Windsor on like a Thursday or a Friday thinking that you're going to be able to shop here because you aren't but they do have a huge amount of furniture. Like you can literally buy beds. You can buy beds and all sorts of stuff here. This was $120 for this bed. I think it's probably antique. This cute dresser as well, I really liked that. So uh, once I was finished up at this Vinnie's, I drove out to Richmond. Now Richmond is like 10 minutes from Windsor and there's a Salvation Army on the corner of uh, the main road. And they had an enormous selection of homewares too. I don't know what it is about heading out toward the Blue Mountains, but the further away from the city that you go, the more stuff you find. But unfortunately, this stuff was kind of expensive. Like that, that's a $55 vase, which was way too much for me. But some of these things were cheap. Some of them were affordable. This was super cute. Out here at uh, the Vinnie's in Richmond, there was an antique mirror. The Anglicare had nothing. And also the Vinnie's at Marion had nothing either. So I didn't film there. But the Salvation Army at Marion was amazing. They had so much stuff, like these beautiful frames. These were $5 each. They had the most enormous section of homewares and it was all color coordinated too. Like every color was categorized. Vintage 
retro. These were stone goblets, like literally made of stone. This stuff, this was in the green section. I didn't need it, but I wanted it. These, look, I would have bought every last one of them because they're so cute. They're only a dollar each, but I didn't get any. I did get this thing though, because I've got a vision in mind for it. And I've been looking for some trays as well that I can flip. So anyway, the next day I actually ended up going back to the Windsor Vinnies. And uh, here I am picking up some things that I had seen the day before that I didn't buy the first time that I saw them. Oh, this is at the Vinnies at Dural. This is the Dural Vinnies. I went there after I went to Windsor. And uh, they had a really good selection of homewares too. And they had some very, very cute cushions. Of course, I bought those. What do you think of these guys? Tell me in the comments below. Do you think this is ugly or cute? So anyway, after the Vinnies at Dural, I went to the Dural Salvation Army, which is always fantastic. They once again have a very big homeware selection. I hope that you didn't click on this video hoping to watch a video about clothing. You will not see clothing here, my friends. You will see pastel home decor. That's that's what this is about. They had so many random things here, like this donut light. It's a light and it's a donut. Cute, right? Uh, this, this came as a two-piece set. It was a desk and a stand, but I managed to convince them to just let me buy the stand on its own. And uh, anyway, when I was done here, then I headed out to the Vinnies at Castle Hill. This is on Victoria Avenue. Once again, this place is massive. These were Royal Dalton cups and not only Royal Dalton, but Gordon Ramsay Royal Dalton. And I'm an idiot sandwich for not buying them. This thing was cute. I did buy this though. It was only $2. And this is a Pugasus, guys. Now I was on the lookout for some furniture and I found these matching bedside tables. These were a lot cheaper than some that I had seen the day before. I saw these, I mean, these were all pastel colors and they were cute. I don't need them though. I did find this. Uh, every Cotton On employee knows what that is. Then I headed to the Vinnies at Borkham Hills and I found some more vessels for propagating uh, some cute teacups. They were pastel, great find. This thing, this matches the stone goblets that I saw at the other place. These were really, really cute too. And uh, pink sneakers. These were like, I think $7. Pink sneakers, $7. Great find. Adorable vase, great glassware. And that's it. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed the shopping trip. Let's have a look now at the things that I did actually buy and I'm so excited to show them to you. I've broken them up into different categories. So I've got, I would say three main categories. I've got the pastel thrift. So everything that I thrifted that was pastel. I've got items that I'm planning on flipping. So, you know, either sanding them back and painting them or spray painting them and things like that. And then I also have some glassware too that I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with. So I'll be asking you guys for your thoughts and opinions, but uh, with that, let's get straight into it. All right, I'm going to start off by showing you the glassware that I bought. Glassware from thrift stores is always very, very cheap. There's so many interesting shapes and sizes, and also they're so super versatile. There's so many things that you can do with glass vessels, whether it's just simply decorating a shelf, propagating plants, you could even use it to drink out of somehow. So speaking of drinking, my husband and my best friend brew beer and cider. They have a Keganator fridge, they brew all of their own brews, and I thought that I would get them each a nice little glass stein. So these little cups, they were $4 each from Vinnie's. These are super heavy, they're really, really hefty. When I've been into stores before, like for example, uh, Victoria's Basement is a homeware store that we have around here. And things like this in Victoria's basement are really expensive, at least 30 or $40 each sometimes, depending on the brand. These are really heavy, really beautiful shape. Dan loves them. Speaking of heavy, oh my God, this I was so excited about. So uh, Dan and I were at Victoria's basement recently looking for a carafe. I think that's what you call this, a carafe. And uh, we found one that we really, really liked the look of and it was $600 and we decided obviously not to get it. And then it was a couple of days later that I found this. So the brand of this is called Crosno and uh, this brand is sold in David Jones, Maya, you know, high-end retail stores here in Australia. And I did find this one, $250 this would have been brand new. I paid 25 for it, which to be fair, I did think was a little tiny bit much. I know that sounds very stingy of me, but I have seen a lot of these glass vessels like this for you know ten dollars or so at thrift stores, but this one, the shape of it was just so perfect. I just find it absolutely beautiful with this hole in the center. It is so heavy. It's so beautiful to look at too. 
I mean, you, I could even use this as a vase. I don't have to use it to pour wine or water. I could use it as a vase if I want to, or I could just leave it on a shelf as a decorative item. It's stunning. And yes, $25 might be a little bit much considering it's secondhand, but considering what it would have been new, it's a great find. My original intention with these two vases here was to spray paint them. As you can see, they've got this sort of bubbly textured detail here. And I thought if I spray painted them matte pink, they could look really, really nice. These were only $2 each. And uh, since I've brought them home, I've been staring at them on the shelf and thinking, I do actually really like them clear. Maybe I don't need to spray paint them. Maybe I should just leave them. Or I could spray paint one matte pink and one matte blue. It's a hard decision to make, but for the moment, I'm just going to leave these and I'm going to propagate some plants in them. Another one for propagation is this little vase here. The shape of this is beautiful. It's got this really nice sort of uh, frilly, what do you call this? Opening? Rim. Frilly rim. And the glass has this cracked detail. Now this is another one that I was considering spray painting pink, but again, now that I have it home and sitting on a shelf, I think it looks really beautiful the way that it is. This one was $6. Funny, these were two, this is six. This is obviously, I, I guess this is hand blown glass. Could even be vintage potentially for all I know. So $6 seems pretty reasonable. I brought home these two little candle holders. These were $2 each. I could use these either as mini vases. I could put water in here and I could propagate some little stems. But there is a trend going around right now with these candles where people sort of melt the candles a little bit and then make them interesting shapes and twirl and all that sort of thing. And these could just be really good to stand up some nice pastel candles. So yet to decide, plants or candles, not sure yet, but sitting as they are on a shelf, they look really cute. They look like two big ice cubes. I could not resist these. These are so sweet. These were also $2 each. When I saw these, I just thought they looked like little miniature vases and I just want to get little mini bundles of flowers and put them in here. I think I need to get some dried flowers so that way I can set them up somewhere permanently with a little mini bouquet. Baby's Breath is a flower that basically lasts forever. It dries out and it keeps its color and it keeps its shape. So I could fill these with little baby breath bouquets. These are also great for propagating my plants as well. These two items you may recognize by the shape, but not by the color because I have changed them. So this was originally, this was a clear glass. This was an experiment for me to see how spray painting glass would go, whether it would actually adhere or not. So I picked up two different pink spray paints. This one is like a lighter sort of pastel pink and this one was more of a dusty pink. I definitely like this shade of pink more. This thing was only a couple of dollars and I'm going to use it to keep flowers in or possibly keep makeup brushes in. This one, oh, I think this was 10, I can't remember. I'll put it up on the screen. This was a greenish colored metal and the glass was frosted. It's really early 2000s. This aesthetic, I, I remember so many decorations in my parents' house looking like this with the cast iron and the frosted glass. So obviously I spray painted it gold because for me gold and pastel pink is a perfect combination. I have some dried flowers in here that my friend Michelle gave me for my birthday and they're just gonna last forever and I need to ask her where she got them from because I, I need a thousand more. So this was my first experiment into spray painting glass and metal and it worked out really, really well. I think it looks beautiful. People on TikTok really liked it too. So hopefully this color will give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing to some of these other items that I picked up because I've got I actually have three shades of pink spray paint and this one is my favorite so far. So more things will start appearing looking like this, but you'll have to stay tuned uh, for Thriftmas maybe day three or four for me to actually be converting some of these items because I haven't done them yet. And I'm sure that I'm gonna get hundreds of comments from people saying, no, please, please don't spray paint that thing. But it's time to have a look at the pastel items. I'm gonna zoom you in nice and close. So these little coffee cups and saucers were $2 per set. The top one is green and it says refresh and the bottom one is pink and it says relax. As soon as I saw them, I knew I had to bring them home. I don't really drink that much espresso. So these are probably going to be more decorative than functional, but I do have some friends that come over and drink espresso. So when those people are here, these will get put to good use. And for only $2 per set, that was such a steal. These little pink shot glasses were $2 each. We don't have a huge amount of shot glasses in this household, mostly because we 
don't really have any need for them, we aren't particularly party animals, but every so often we get a little bit crazy. So at least this way I will know which shot glass is mine because I will always call dibs on the pink one. This little guy was only $2. Now this is a good representation of what some of these other things are going to start looking like when I start spray painting them. I didn't do this myself, this was already blue when I got it, but you can imagine going into a thrift store and if you found just some simple little clear thing like this, you could get some Rust-Oleum spray paint and you could spray paint it a pastel color and it would look just as nice as this. It's important to get like a matte finish though because, per well, at least to me, I think that the matte finish looks the nicest. This is another one of those items that is great decoratively. Don't know how practical it'll be. Like you can put some little dried flowers or something in it, but it also looks equally nice just sitting on a shelf. So when I saw this teacup and saucer, I knew I had to have it. This was $5 at Vinnie's and it's absolutely beautiful. It's a pastel pink color with very fine white stripes. And the saucer is obviously white with black stripes. And to me, this is ridiculously aesthetic. I, ugh, this is just so beautiful. It makes me so happy. This reminds me of those you know those um, tile coffee tables that are all the rage right now that have come back into fashion? This has the same vibe as that and I love it. This I'm gonna use constantly. I will be using this for my coffee every morning and I love it. This little trio were $2 each, so $6 all up for these. I originally thought that I would buy them and spray paint them because I didn't really like this dark dusty shade of pink, but when I put them on the shelf and I saw them with all the other things, I actually like that there's a bit of contrast and variation between the different shades of pink. When you group them together, things always look the most aesthetic in groups of three, and especially when they've got, you know, different heights. So when I saw these three, I knew I couldn't just take one, I had to get all three. Now, I left these behind the first time that I saw them because despite the color being perfect, I didn't really think I had much of a use for them, which is true, I don't really need any more cups in my household, but these were $2 each. Uh, they're plastic, so they're very durable. Most of the cups that I have are made of glass and they're fragile, so it's not a bad idea to have some cups that you can just take out into the backyard and sit, you know, if you're sitting on the grass or if you're sitting somewhere with a rocky surface and if it falls over, at least you know it's not gonna shatter. Because it was pink and because they have a really nice shape to I decided to get them $2 each, that's pretty good. And also they look very nice on a shelf. I was so happy when I found this for $3, this little shell tray, perfect for jewelry. This is going to look lovely on a shelf with some earrings or my watch or you know whatever sort of jewelry that I want to keep in there. This shell aesthetic, I love. There's an Instagram account that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I'll put it up on the screen. She has a bunch of shell shaped vintage items. And when I saw that, I knew that I wanted to start collecting them too. So when I first saw this shell, the funny thing was I decided not to get it because I thought, yes, it's really, really cute, um, but it's not the right shade of pink. And then silly me, I realized I need to stop being so fussy about my shades of pink because all shades of pink are beautiful. So I did go back to the Vinnie's the next day and pick this one up because I couldn't stop thinking about it all night. <laughs> ah, now these. Oh my God. Okay guys, tell me honestly, do you love them or do you hate them? Because when I walked into the Vinnie's at Jural and I saw these on the shelf, I thought they were so ugly. <laughs> they have this interesting sort of sprinkle looking pattern all on the bottom and the top has this frilly rim. Now these are really dirty, they need a clean. Whoever owned these, I don't know if you can see inside, they are dirty inside. And also they were $15 each. So I walked around the store for a good 20 minutes before I decided, you know what, I will actually buy these. Because when I first looked at them and I didn't like them, it later occurred to me, these are handmade. These are handmade glass vases. They don't have any anything on the bottom saying made in China or anything like that. These are handmade. Potentially they're Italian. I know there's a lot of things like this that come out of Italy. Also because they were $15 and they're very, very heavy, I did think there is probably some value to them. These aren't just some sort of mass produced Chinese vase that you could pick up in any home store at your local Westfield. These are probably quite old. They're so dusty. They've been in someone's house forever. I can give them a clean up and give them a new lease of life. And also when I brought them home, I took some pictures of them. How beautiful do they look in these photos? They're, it's like ugly ducklings, right? They're so ugly that they are absolutely beautiful and I'm so happy. These are some of the favorite things that I've ever picked up secondhand. 
Now here's something that I had absolutely no hesitation buying. When I saw this, I knew I had to have it. This was $10. Now it's got a bit of yellow staining in the bottom, probably from someone leaving some perfume in it for many, many, many years. It smells like my mum. <laughs> so uh, this smells like Elizabeth Arden perfume or um, I'll put it up on the screen. This is a perfume that my mum wears and this, I reckon that's the perfume that was stored in this. This glass is beautiful, purple, mottly textured. What is the name of this type of glass? Is it like art, art glass? Is that what they call it? This is just stunning. Uh, like literally, how could I say no? I walked in and saw a, a pastel purple vintage perfume dispenser and I knew I had to have it. Okay, these. I walked past these a couple of times. I actually left the shop without buying them and then I went back in for them because when I first saw them, I saw the green and I thought, oh, that's so pretty. Then I turned it around and it was brown and I thought, nope, that's not for me, that's ugly. But these are literally made of solid stone. Someone has taken a piece of whatever this is, is, is it granite? I don't know what sort of stone this is, but it's completely solid, a solid piece of stone. So these were only $4 each. Can you believe that? Where on earth these days could you ever walk into a shop and buy something like this? Like I, I have literally never in my life seen stone goblets before. These are completely carved out of a single piece of stone and they're absolutely glorious and I'm so in love with them. Four dollars guys, four dollars each. What a steal. God, I hope I find more of these one day because these are stunning. Now, speaking of finding more of them, I went into a completely different Vinnie's. I found those in the Salvation Army in Marion and I went into Vinnie's at Borkham Hills later that day and I found this. Now, I didn't buy it the first time that I saw it. I actually went back a couple of days later for it because this is an ashtray and I thought I have no use for this. But because this, once again, is carved out of a solid piece of stone, this thing weighs, I would say, three, four kilos, maybe? But this is insanely heavy. I can't even, what was that, like eight pounds? I don't know. This was $7 and it's literally the same as these. It's made of the same stone, could possibly even have belonged to the same person, who knows? But I did have to go back for it because I thought, how often are you ever gonna find something like this? To me, this is rare. This is this is the sort of stuff that you go thrifting for. You're never gonna find something like this at David Jones or, or if you do, it'll be hundreds of dollars. So this, I'm, look, I don't smoke and I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I'll probably use it as a jewelry tray or possibly a, I could burn incense in it, but I, I don't wanna damage it. This looks pristine. So I'm not really sure what to do with it, but I'm really glad that I have it. I was very happy to have found these. These were two dollars each. How could I resist? Despite there only being two, and I would have loved it if there'd been like an entire set so that I could entertain my family and friends. Because there's two, these will just be for Dan and I. Two purple bowls and two small purple plates. These will probably not get used that often because I wouldn't want to chip them. I have some really hardy plates that I, I use every single day that go in and out of the dishwasher and they get chipped and everything and I don't really mind. So these are more special ones. Uh, whenever we're having like a special meal or maybe something that I want to photograph and put on Instagram, that's when I'll pull these out. And yeah, $2 each, $8 for this. Makes me so happy. Speaking of makes me happy, when I found this, I couldn't believe it because earlier in the day, or maybe it was the, the previous day, I can't remember, that's when I found this. As you can see, they are so similar. They're both this purple art glass. This will be wonderful to put a tea light in because from the outside, you can't really see the design. But when you look on the inside and the light is shining in, that's when you see the design. So I think that if this was lit from inside with a tea light, you would be able to see the really lovely design on the outside. This was $10 and the lady at the store did comment and say, oh, that's a lot of money for this. And then she said, oh, I think that this is probably vintage or maybe it's made in Italy. So she said that's why she thinks that the people at the store priced it $10. Yes, $10 is probably a lot for this, but once again, I'm hoping this is, you know, some handmade, hand-blown glass from Italy or something and $10 is totally justifiable because if it's just something made in China that you could pick up for two bucks, I've played myself. This, look at this guys. How beautiful is this? This is iridescent. It's purple and iridescent. It's a really, really fine porcelain maybe vase. This was $2 and it's, uh, it's so light and so dainty. 
and I hope that you can properly see the iridescence of it maybe if you kind of look around this area because uh, in real life it's picking up greens yellows pinks purples it's completely iridescent the inside is an iridescent white I got all three of these things from different stores and they look like they were made to sit together on a shelf. Aren't they just so beautiful? This little guy was also $2. I did originally get this with the intention of spray painting it, but it's so beautiful on its own and it's a really nice contrast piece for some of these pastel colors that I have on the shelf. This sitting next to the purple ones or sitting next to something pink, it's a really nice contrast. So I'm not gonna change this. It's either a vase or a candle holder, I'm not sure, but it's just, it's such a satisfying shape. It's like a burger. These cups are retro as heck. Pastel retro as heck, and I knew I had to have them. These were a dollar each. Like, how could I not? Look at this aesthetic. This, like 70s. I just, I love it. Mint green, like a peachy apricot color, and like a periwinkle blue. I want to paint my nails with a design like this. I want to get a very fine nail brush and paint little squiggles just like this on my nails. These are plastic cups. I reckon these are easily from the 90s, but they look like they're in brand new condition. I think whoever owned these literally never used them. They are glorious and I'm so happy. I just want to put pink lemonade in them. Here's one for my kitchen. This is a little metal tin that's got coffee written on it. This was $4.00. It's got like a, a suction rubber seal on it too to keep your coffee grinds fresh. I currently keep my coffee beans in an empty Milo tin. So I'm really happy that I actually have a coffee tin now. And for $4, and it's the perfect shade of pink too. I love it. I found this little pink pot at the Salvos in Windsor. It was actually sitting outside. The Salvos in Windsor is really unusual. It's got a shop front that's like a teeny tiny little shop front. And then you go out the back and then you go into like an outdoor courtyard and then it opens up into this enormous warehouse. Anyway, so in the walkway between the two parts of the store, this was sitting on the ground. I didn't know if it was for sale or not. It was just sitting on the ground. I wasn't sure if it was like belonging to the store because it was outside in the weather. It was wet. It had rain in it and everything. And anyway, so I asked the lady, I said, is that little pink pot outside for sale? And she went and picked it up. Two dollars. Two dollars on the bottom of it. This is going to have a beautiful plant in it. Uh, $2! Like, you can't get stuff like this from Bunnings for $2. It's like $25 for something like this at Bunnings, so I'm really happy. Perfect shade of pink. It's a really good size, too. Uh, it doesn't have any drainage holes in the bottom, but that's okay. I'll just put it with the nursery pot inside. It's beautiful. Now, this shelf that these things are all sitting on, this was, where there's the tag, $5. I got this for $5 from the Salvos. My plan for this one is I'm going to paint it white, because I don't really like this yellow timber look. So uh, this isn't really a timber shelf, this is just a, a veneer, but I'm going to sand it a little bit. I don't know if you can sand veneer. Maybe I'll just wipe it down and just spray paint white straight over the top of it. So this will very shortly look very, very different, but that video will be out in a couple of days when I redo this. I got this vase. This was $10. It looks a little bit old. It looks kind of damaged too. This silver part around here doesn't look great. So I think I'm going to take this bottom area off. I'm going to spray paint this part gold and I'm going to spray paint all of this matte pink. This is going to look incredible, guys. I'm so excited. This vase was $25. It's uh, quite solid, very, very heavy. On the bottom, it actually says made in China. So it's not like it's uh, some sort of beautiful vintage hand painted vase, as you might be led to believe. This is just like a mass manufactured vase. So again, my thought process was that I could tape off these darker areas where it's like an accent detail and do these gold. And then I could do the rest of it pink or I could possibly do white and I could do, oh, you know what, that's an idea. What if I did it white and then I took this design, you know, with the, those three colors, like the mint, the apricot and the purple, like what's on these cups. I could paint little squiggles on it. Basically, I want to use it to put like some really big birds of paradise leaves or some monstera leaves in. And it's just obviously not my aesthetic right now and it needs a little bit of spice. So this one will also be in my thrift flip video. Now, coming over this way, there's some really interesting things here. I'm gonna start off with this because aside from the funny sprinkle vases, this thing is my favorite. I've been obsessed with Murano mushroom lamps, except they are beyond expensive. I mean like thousands of dollars and 
Like I just love the look of a mushroom lamp. And before mushroom lamps were popular on the internet, I remember I used to go into Vinnie's Salvos and I, I've seen them before, years ago, but I have seen them. So when I went thrift shopping this day, I was really hoping, hoping beyond hope that I would find a vintage mushroom lamp. And God, you would not believe the look on my face when I walked into the Vinnie's in Windsor and I saw this. This is a vintage Ikea mushroom lamp. Yes, that's right, this is from Ikea. This is made in Hungary and these, these are at least, I think they're like 15 years old. Quote me if I'm wrong, they're not really, they're not technically vintage, like not legitimately vintage, but people call this vintage Ikea because it's like from the early days of Ikea. Look, this lamp, it's a solid piece of glass. The glass starts here, comes up and it continues. It's all one piece of glass. And then on the inside is the light bulb. And when you switch it on, it glows a really nice warm color from within. I, I've literally never seen one of these lamps before. And when I walked in and saw it, my jaw hit the floor. It might not be a Murano mushroom lamp, but this is basically still a mushroom lamp to me. And it's adorable and I love it so much. It's not quite the right color. I wish it was a pastel color, but when you turn it on, it obviously brightens it up and it's not quite so dark. So, uh, have you guys ever seen something like this? To me, this is a unicorn. This is a rare find. I, I'm so happy, beyond happy with this. And this was 20, there you go, $20. So, like, I could not be happier. Now, these vases back here, they're like funny looking noodles. The blue one was $5. The green one was $6. I don't know why the difference. They are the same. It has a little handmade in Italy sticker on the bottom of it. And then interestingly enough, I found these two in different stores. I think one of them was in the Salvation Army at Marion, and one of them was in the Vinnie's at Dural or something like that, I can't remember. But these literally came from two different places. <laughs> So I was really, really happy when I found them. Maybe they were from one person's collection and they got donated to different stores or possibly it might have been a popular design at some point and different people have donated it. But my original thought when I saw these, because I don't, like the colour scheme isn't really my colour scheme, right? You know, like it's not pastel. So I was originally planning on spray painting all of these with the matte pink, matte blue and white. But once again, the longer that these sit on a shelf and the more that I look at them, the more I fall in love with them as they are. They are handmade, potentially vintage pieces and I think it would be a shame to cover it up. Tell me what you guys think though. They're ugly, but in a really cool way. <laughs> Here's two more little pieces that I'm planning on spraying. This one obviously is slightly bigger and it's blue. This was $2. This one was $1. So $3 here. And I think that if I spray these matte pink, they'll look so cute. Or if I could spray this one matte white and then I could put matte pink polka dots on it or something. Again, I just want to turn these into my vibe, my aesthetic, so they match the theme of my whole room basically. But $3 all up for these and these are beautiful. The shape of them is lovely. That's the thing, when you go into thrift stores, just look for the shape. Don't worry about the color, it's the shape that matters. If you like the shape, you can make it whatever color that you want. And I'm so excited to flip these. Another thing that I'm planning on flipping is this. This is like a stationary holder. Now it looks like a vintage piece, right? But on the bottom, it, it says TK Maxx, $15. <laughs> So, not a vintage piece. This was $4 and my plan for this one is to take it apart. I'm going to respray the silver part and I'm going to make it gold and I'm going to do the rest of it pink. I'm going to spray all the timber parts pink and this part gold. Essentially, the entire thrift flip is going to be turning things from whatever color they are to matte pink and gold. Please don't be mad. My channel is pretty pastel, please, after all. And like, what better pastel color than pastel pink? I think that this will look really pretty in my study if it's gold and pink, and I'm really excited to do this one. This is also kind of wobbly and falling apart a little bit, so I need to give it a clean up and adjust the screw and everything. So I think this one is going to look amazing when I'm done with it. Now, this guy here is another thing that I was thinking of spraying pink. This was $3, a beautiful hexagonal vase. I may not actually spray paint this one. I might just decorate it. I feel like this is a very good can date to have retro swirls all over just like the cups again. Imagine if I do like an apricot blue and periwinkle polka dots or swirls or something. I think that would look really cute. I just love the shape of it. The shape is wonderful. I can't wait to fill this with some dried flowers or I could even put just a regular plant in here. It does have a drainage hole at the bottom so I could possibly just 
put a plant in here, not treat it like a vase, but more like a planter. I'm not sure, but yeah, I'm very excited to decorate this. Now this shelf that these things are sitting on, I got this for $20. Now this is obviously matte black along here and it's got these three glass shelves. My simple plan for this one is spray paint the black gold. It's going to improve it tenfold. It's going to look magnificent. And also once it's gold and then it's got all the pink and gold accessories all over it, it's going to look a million bucks. God, I'm so excited. And it's such a simple thing to do. So simple. Now back here, I got this print from the Vinnie's in Castle Hill for $5. And uh, when I put this on TikTok, every Australian commented that they either have this in their room or they've seen it at Typo. <laughs> this is like one of those popular things that every cheap store like Target and Kmart has some version of something like this. It's millennial pink with a green plant. It's very basic and very simple. And uh, look, I'm really happy that I have it. This is going to look great in my guest bedroom. Now, speaking of the guest bedroom, this mirror. Now I paid, I think this was, $50, I'm pretty sure. I came across so many gold mirrors while I was visiting thrift stores and they ranged in price from anywhere from like $30 to $100. I saw one that was $100 that I was very tempted to buy and decided not to and then the next store that I went to I found this one for $50. So don't always jump on things right away when you see them. They probably won't sell in that much of a hurry so I'm really glad that I took some time to think about it because that meant that I found this one this is an enormous mirror. This will go in the guest bedroom on the dressing table. It's mounted on the back, so whoever used to own this had it hung up sideways like this. But for me, I think this is going to look much nicer sitting upright like this and treating it like a dressing table mirror. I'm obsessed with it and I can't wait to find more gold mirrors while I'm thrifting because they really are everywhere. People just toss them out like they don't like they don't think that they're the most beautiful thing they've ever seen. It really confuses me. All right, I grabbed this really unusual bottle slash vase. I'm not really sure what it's meant to be, but uh, this was $5 at the Vinnie's in Richmond. It's got this really unusual bubble kind of texture on it. And I want to spray this one a, a matte color, either matte pink or matte blue. But also, see, the thing is that this sickeningly like lemon lime cordial yellow is not my favorite color at all. I really don't like it. But again, kind of like these things over here, it is ever so slightly growing on me. But the thing is that, like I bought this stuff with the intention to flip it, convert it into something that is my style, that will bring me joy, that I will use. And I feel like if I convert this into something pink or white, I will definitely use it. I will sit it up with dried flowers, whatever, put it on display in my house and it will bring me great joy. But I know some people are probably going to say to me, no, Alex, don't you dare touch it. I want it. Let me buy it. Tell me what you guys think. Do you, should I convert this one or not? I think I should. I, I hate the color. It looks like this. All right, this little thing was $3. And I walked past this a couple of times. I visited this same Vinnie's at Windsor a couple of times. And every time I saw it, I was like, maybe I'll get that, maybe I won't. I finally decided to get it. It's only $3. It's actually meant to be, I think it's supposed to be an oil burner or a tea tea light holder. It's probably a tea light holder. It's got this little hole here. But the thing is that when you turn it upside down, it's hollowed out here. So I'm going to treat it like a vase. I'm going to spray paint this matte pink and I'm going to have flowers sticking out of it or, or propagate some plants from it or something. But I just, I couldn't resist. It's perfectly round. It's so cute. Also, this is the sort of thing where, for example, this is obviously not quite right but I could take like a bowl or something and I could super glue it to the base and I could make some really interesting looking vase out of this I could possibly stack some things one on top of the other and glue them all together something I would really like to do is find some sort of very expensive design home decor and try to recreate it and things like this are perfect for that this is just a very cheap black thing that I would otherwise not really like but as soon as I change the color of it it's got such a good shape that it's going to be wonderful when I convert it. I got this, now this this is $4. This is literally just a plain white plate thing. But the reason that I got it was I was thinking, you remember this, you remember this guy, this vase that looks like an ear horn. The way that this plate fits on here, it fits snug as a bug, like it was made for it. And now instantly, this is a coffee table. So I'm either going to do this pink, the bottom of this gold, and spray this whole thing a metallic gold so that it looks like a, a pink and gold coffee table or I can leave this like a vase and just keep this nearby and if I ever need to convert this into a coffee table I can just sit this thing on top. The size was literally perfect. It's like it was 
designed to go on here. I could also use this like as a planter stand. I could just sit this down and put a pot on top of it with a plant in it. So versatile, so many things that I can do with this. Now I am in the middle of decorating my guest bedroom using only thrifted items. That video is going to be out in a couple of weeks because I'm really taking my time to curate the items get a theme going for the guest bedroom. And when I saw these, I knew I had to get them. These matching $15 lamps, $15, yes, that is a little bit much. These are also made in China. So these aren't vintage or anything. And I know that people are gonna scream and say, Alex, you paid way too much for those. I should have probably only paid $5 per lamp, but I just loved the shape so much. And the way that I saw it was, these are very easy for me to flip. My plan is to disassemble them take this silver piece out and I'm gonna spray paint that gold. Then I'm gonna spray paint this part matte pink and I'm potentially going to use fabric dye on the lampshade and do this a different color as well. If you can think of some interesting color combinations or maybe you've seen some lamps on Pinterest that I could possibly try and recreate, I wanna go with the pastel theme. The other part of me also thinks, well, maybe I could just recoat this lampshade. I could do like a like a velvet or something, like pink velvet on the lampshade, leave that as white and make that gold. There's so many color combinations that I could do. I need to take a couple of days to think about it, but once I've figured it out, this will also be in the pastel thrift flip video that's coming up this month. But I just, I love the shape of these so much. Yes, I probably paid too much for them, but they're really, really cool to me and they have a lot of potential. Now, speaking of potential, I picked up three pieces of furniture. So originally I saw this drawer. Now this one was $12, which I thought was such a steal. I'm planning on sanding this whole thing back. This is solid timber. I'm gonna take away these really enormous old looking knobs and I'm going to replace them with like some crystal knobs or something. I'm probably gonna paint the whole thing white. I was hoping to find matching bedside tables and when I came across these two, at first I didn't realize they were matching. I would forgive you for thinking that these two were not from the same set, but the thing is, they are. These were $20 each and they are indeed exactly the same. The only difference is this one has either been kept on a side of the room with the window, which meant that the direct sunlight faded it, or maybe they were possibly kept in different rooms, but they are exactly the same. So I'm going to strip off the stain on both of these, sand them right back, probably paint them white or maybe even blue. This design of drawer, I really like the look of with that sort of duck egg blue and gold handles. Not entirely sure what color scheme I'm gonna go for yet, but I'm gonna modernize these two and these will go in the guest bedroom with those two white lamps on top of them. So I've uh, just gotta make sure that whatever color that I do the bedside tables, that the lamps are going to match. Some more little easy things that I'm planning on flipping are just these metal trays. This was $2. This one was $6. It's got sort of gold handles on the edges. And this one was $5. Now I've seen this thing on TikTok where people will spray paint a tray like this. Then they'll get washing detergent and they'll pour it all over in a pattern. Then directly over the top of the washing detergent, they spray paint again. And then you rinse it off once it's dry and the color underneath where the washing detergent was is really contrasted to the color on top. So I was thinking I could do something like that with these, possibly just spray paint some of them gold and use them to put candles on and various home decor. I think some of these will look really nice on the kitchen island with fruit on them, something that I can keep my keys on when I walk in the front door, you know, that sort of thing. Last but not least, three of my favorite finds. I have this velvet pink cushion. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's a, a really nice sort of triangular texture on this. This is so, so soft. And also it's got a big gold zip running up the side, which means you can unzip it and wash it if it gets dirty. This was $4 from the Salvation Army in uh, Windsor. I found this pink velvet cushion for $5 at the Vinnie's at Dural. This again is so soft. Whoever owned this literally never used it. Maybe someone got given it as a gift and didn't want it, or maybe it's just sat in a spare bedroom that no one ever used or something, but it's like brand new and it's so soft, a really nice velvet. Look how shiny it is. And when I saw this guy at the Vinnie's at Dural, I also knew I had to have it. This is incredibly soft too, a strawberry cushion. This is from Miniso. I love Miniso. This is brand new. It's got the Miniso tag sitting on it. This was $5. And this is the softest out of all three. And the three of them together, like this is going to decorate the bed in the guest bedroom and they're beautiful. 
So that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked Thriftmas Day 1. I hope that you liked the things that I picked up. I am obsessed. I absolutely love them. There's so many unique things here that you would never find anywhere else. So keep an eye out. I've got a video coming every day this month where I'm thrifting, flipping, buying, doing all sorts of things. You're gonna love it. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. If you have any thrift stores in Sydney that you think that I should visit, please tell me in the comments down below because I mean, I have my usual thrift stores that I go to, but I really want to find some new ones. I don't mind traveling. So with that, subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you know when I'm posting more Thriftmas videos every day this month. Don't forget to come back every day. There'll be a new video here waiting. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!